<laughs> so what I want you to do is hold on to them. Okay. And then at the end of the program, I'll, I'll instruct you what to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you and a couple of them will, you know, you guys Good will spread them out. So you take a portion or whatever. And then just say whatever you don't you guys use excited? for me. You get three? Okay. Uh, they're going to get four each. Let's go ahead and pray. Oh, each kid. Well, actually, uh, let's go ahead and adult. Start and each adult. Go. Yeah, kids like Father, we thank you so much and up, to be here this 10 and 11 to up. Worship you, Lord, okay. But it's a lot of people, so what we want to do is we want to hand them out toward the end. I, not I, like during the program. I'll tell you when. Pray for the time afterwards to be fellowship, Lord. Pray that it would be a sweet aroma unto you, Father. Pray that you would help us now, Lord, to not worry about anything else but giving you glory, praise, and honor, Lord. That's what we're here for, and that's what we're all about, to worship you, our Emmanuel, our God with us. So we thank you, we love you, we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
be seated.
So tonight, we have an unusual guest who has had an unusual life. He's been on the radio for the last 30 years. He can be heard each weekday throughout Southern California on KSDW 88.9 FM, 96.9 FM, and on the weekends at K-Wave at 107.9. Among his accomplishments, he was an award-winning sand castle competitor for 13 years. He also competed as a demolition derby driver for several years at the San Diego County Fair, and he has been a successful stand-up comedian. <laughs> but Jerry's also an accomplished illusionist. He says he suffers from illusions of grandeur. He has entertained audiences from coast to coast and even as far as Africa and China. And his shows have amazed audiences of all ages. And as he joins us today, by the way, he has a brand new website, Jerry Does Magic. Dot com. Go ahead and bookmark that. But best of all, he loves Jesus and shares his faith through his work. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the illusionist, Jerry Langford. Well, thank you very much. So glad you're here tonight. One of the things that I did ask them to do, and that was to encourage you to move forward. So leave the house lights up so people can move forward because I can't see you way back there. We want to be a little closer family. Come on up. I won't bite. You might get burned or singed by a little bit of fire, but that's okay. <coughs> Hang on just a second. I feel something. <coughs> there we go. Sorry, I had a spicy burrito for dinner. That uh, Salsa Verde over there at the uh, cafe is nice. Yeah, come on in, you guys. want you to be close. That way I can choose you and uh, we can have some fun. If you're sitting in the back, I'll probably saw you in half. So you guys might want to move up. Come on, guys. Don't be afraid. You're not uh, back row Baptists, are you? I, I, uh, not trying to offend anybody. All right. I want to make sure that everybody has a chance to move up. And, and also because uh, we're going to be doing some damage tonight. We're going to be uh, making a mess. We're going to be doing all kinds of weird things. Also, I wanted to ask the sound guys, I should have asked them sooner, to leave this mic on for me because I'm going to ask a couple of people to uh, use that. So you can just leave that hot for me. Appreciate it. In the meantime, well, welcome. So glad you're here. This is part of a, a fun Christmas series that I am a pr just privileged to be a part of. Uh, hang on, just a second, let me get rid of this. This is just in my way. Uh, here we go. I guess I'm just going to start throwing things around. That's okay. And because it's close to Christmas, I brought my candy cane, so that works out nice. There we go. Get rid of that. Ah, uh, stop it. I'm going to be doing some things to embarrass you, and then you guys are going to be sorry you clapped. I am excited to be here. How many people came last year? You guys are crazy. You came back? What were you thinking? <laughs> well, I hope you had fun enough to come. I'm hearing somebody watching the game over here. Is that right? Is the game on? It's okay. Just keep it down a little bit. That's all right. Or let me know if they score. That's all I ask. Uh, no, we're so glad you guys are here. Uh, and maybe some of you for the first time maybe came to a church in a long time because you heard a magician was coming and Look at that. The ceiling did not collapse on you. The roof didn't cave in. See, so you were holding an illusion that the place would fall apart when you came. Well, we're glad you're here. Seriously. Uh, God bless you and your family. So glad you are here tonight. My name is Jerry. It is my privilege to uh, bring a little bit of uh, a Christmas message and some fun illusion entertainment for you. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I overheard... Uh, him mention my, my demolition derby driving, I was practicing in the parking lot while you guys were in here singing, so I hope you don't mind. Uh, just look for scratches and then just send me a bill. That's fine. Oh, I think I, I meant to pull something out of here while I am stalling for time. I think I still have it. Uh, it's maybe down in the cellar. Ah, here it is. A little fire. I need that for sure. Look at that. I'm already thirsty. I cannot believe this. I'm just, if you don't mind, I'm just going to take a little bit of a drink break. Uh, wait. Oh, sorry. You weren't supposed to see that. Let me put that away. I am an illusionist. So if you thought you were going to see a magician tonight, now nah, uh, I don't really do magic, but I do illusions. 
and I brought this blue board right here, right? It's blue? It's green. Okay, I'm sorry. I bought this blue board over here. That's pink. Okay, I'm sorry. All right, keep track then. Which one is bigger, the green one or the pink one? The, no, which one's bigger? The, the, the green one or the pink one? The green one. Okay, which one's bigger now? Well, make up your mind. Which is it? Is it... Uh, no, no, actually, uh, neither is bigger. Somebody said neither. That's correct. They're actually the same size. Does anybody know what this is called? An illusion. It's actually an optical illusion because of the curve of the boards. It makes one look bigger than the other, even though they haven't changed sizes at all. So I'm going to be performing some optical illusions tonight for you. And by the way, where did optical illusions come from? Do you know that they came from our Creator? When He made this world, even the universe, He put in all sorts of fun little illusions. And I think that's just as a testament to His, well, His sense of humor, and also uh, maybe encouraging us not to trust everything we see, especially on the internet, although I don't think that's what He had in mind. But I, I think that's a... That's a valid point. And some of you may remember, if you remember last year, I, I play dominoes. Anybody play dominoes? Good. So I've got, uh, I've got, well, I got one on this side, four on this side, three over here, six on this side, and one over here. So how many sides do I have? Four. Four. Thank you. No, that's not true. Two is correct. Because, look, I'll show you. I've got four there, three on that side, six over here, and then one over here on this side. But if I take my hand away, you'll see how it's done. In fact, I'll show you right now. There's not one dot, but two. And if I hold it like this, it gives the impression that there's three. And if I hold it like this, it looks like only one. But you can see there's not really three dots. And on this side, there's not really six. There's actually five. And if I hold it like this, it looks like six. Or if I hold it like this, it looks like four. That's because it's just designed to fool you. So you can see there's not really three on this side, and uh, there's not really six on this side. You guys paying attention? Good? Yeah, that's, that's because there's actually, there's eight. But anyway, just curious if you're following along. Just want to see if you're paying attention. Whenever I get together with my grandchildren, I always uh, love to sit down and color with them, so I always show them my coloring book. But they, they're like, uh, Grandpa, we can't see the pictures. I was like, oh, I forgot. Uh, yeah, I've got to snap my fingers, and that way you can see the pictures. So that helps them see that, you see. It makes it so much easier. And if a girl snaps her fingers, go ahead, try it. Nicely done, yeah. Girls make things beautiful. And uh, what can I say? And if a boy taps it, do it. Snap your fingers. Yeah, boys make things disappear. Yeah, so... <laughs> We remember. That's a true story. <laughs> My wife and I have been married 44 years now, and uh, nah, don't applaud for me. Let's, we should all be like, oh, like that for, for his wife. Uh, that's what I would recommend. It's, uh, it's a hard road, but no, seriously, uh, I am blessed with a, a godly woman who stayed with me uh, through thick and thin 44 years. That's amazing to me. Um, and I'm playing music, but I don't think it hit. Let me try it again. There we go. It's, it's okay. Uh, well just There it is. So just keep it down under while I'm talking. Um, anyway, my wife and I have three grown adult children and uh, four grandchildren. And we are blessed. And I always carry a picture of my wife in my wallet because she's frankly just really hot. So, oh, sorry. Yeah. You know what she says? She says, I burn through money. I th think that's true. So I got I to gotta be careful. <laughs> uh, thank you. That's really fun in a drive through I got to tell you. Freaks the poor cashier out big time. Uh... I don't want to. I don't want to freak anybody out. Yeah, let's put this here. There we go. Somebody is a Stranger Thing fan. Well, I, that's all, that's kind of like theme music to me because nearly everything I do is Stranger. 
Uh, let's see. I did this earlier in the cafe, and by the way, afterwards, I'm going to swing by the cafe, and I'm going to be doing some uh, close-up work, close-up illusions work. So if you're out over there, I'll try to drop by your table and do some things that I can't really do uh, here with a big stage or big audience. But let's see. Uh, let me get someone's help. Uh, you, ma'am, would you help me in the white? Yes, you. I'm looking right at you. Yeah, come on up here. You're doing great. You just dropped everything and ran. I appreciate that. What is your name, please? Julie. Julie? That's correct, by the way. <laughs> I was just testing you. I'm going to put a J right there for you. That way I can remember your name. In fact, uh, I'm going to put an X and a line. Do you see that right there? Perfect. Did you have a pet when you were growing up? You d no way. <laughs> She had a turtle when she was growing up. It's weird. I just asked somebody this earlier. Wait a minute. Are you related to Susie? Okay. Or Cindy? All right. Well, I'm guessing it's a different turtle. Maybe, maybe it's a shared turtle. That's okay. What I'd like you to do is to write the turtle's name on that line. I don't remember. You don't remember. Oh. How so? You were little, but you remember it was a turtle. All right, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to ask you to make up a name right now that you would name your turtle if he were still with you. Okay? And you're going to write it on there, and then you're going to fold this closed, and just like that. All right, so while you're doing that, I'm going to walk over here so that I'm not near it. And uh, Julie, that'll give me a chance to do a little housekeeping over here and clean up. I'm making a mess. Okay, that's good enough. Are you done? She's still working on it. That's okay. Take your time. Take, we're all waiting, aren't we? We're, we're all, all very patient. <laughs> okay, good. All right, I'll take the pen. No, it's okay. I'll take the pen. And uh, let me put that away. And then why not? I'll take the paper. You got it folded closed. Okay, and that's your initial right on the front? Perfect. Good, because I don't, I don't need this at all. I just, <clears throat> it's hard for me to tear it apart, though. It is difficult. I'm just tearing this away. Now, would you just look this over? Is there anything visible here other than your J initial on the outside? There's nothing at all, is there? In fact, it's just totally, uh, here, I'm going to continue to tear this. Let me just uh, see if I can tear it some more into little tiny pieces. And you're just going to have to keep me honest and everybody else honest that it is just all a bunch of garbage. Would you agree? Yeah. Is there anything there that you can see? No. All right. Do you have a pocket? Yeah. Put that in your pocket. Perfect. Perfect. You've done that very well. Okay. <laughs> Julie. You, it's Julie, right? Still. Okay, good. <laughs> Julie, you got a turtle. I am, I'm terrible at drawing pictures, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try because I think it's fun to try to draw a turtle. All right. Oh, that's a pretty embarrassing turtle. Your turtle would be very upset with me. Uh, I'm just going to go on a limb here. Would you do me a favor? Would you, in a loud voice, shout to everybody what you would name your turtle if you had a turtle today? Yeah. Would you tell everybody in a loud voice? Sandy? Sandy? Oh, I'm sorry. It's what I wrote Sandy with a turtle. There you go. That's your souvenir. Thank you very much. Have a seat. Ah, it's just a silly, it's just a silly illusion. In fact, um, I, love, I love doing all sorts of weird illusions. In fact, I, I don't like to come empty-handed, so I... Uh, I brought something to share. I don't know, you know, they have, they have drinks in the cafe there, but I brought some Sprite. Does anybody like Sprite? One person. Okay, maybe four. Okay, I'm going to put these in here for you. And then, uh, oh wait, somebody like Coca-Cola? Somebody, same people. Okay, different. Here, I'm going to put the Coca-Cola right there. Who wanted the Sprite? I'm just going to give it to you right now. You did? You did? Okay, hang on just a second. Hang on just a second. I'm so sorry. I... I Put it in the cafe, so you'll just have to find it over there. That's good. All right, good. 
They're like, I don't get it. I just don't understand what he's doing. Well, wait a minute. <laughs> Whoo! Got to be careful there. Uh, whenever I, uh, whenever I get invited to come out to a, a special place, I got no place to put this. I really didn't plan ahead tonight. I always, uh, I always bring my briefcase. Yep, here it is, right here. Let me just pull that because. I always uh, love to travel with my briefcase and show up at events. You know why? Because you never know when you're going to get invited to go bowling afterwards. <laughs> so that's a 14-pound that's a bowling ball, and I'm so glad that it fits in my briefcase because that is a pain to carry around like this. Anyway, let me put that away. Just, well, just, just in case... I, I, I know uh, a friend of mine pulled that out of a briefcase and to demonstrate that it was a real bowling ball, he dropped it and it went right through the stage, left a big hole. So now I'm a little nervous about dropping it, but uh, that's okay. It made, we made it work. Well, uh, I brought a few things tonight that you guys haven't seen before, but um, a lot of them involve volunteers. So I'm going to need a volunteer, somebody who got here very early, got a seat right up front. Yes, you. What is your name, please? Would you come up here, please? Give her a hand. High five. Oh, I guess low five. Can you give me a low five? Really low. Thank you. Oh, say your name one more time. Mina. Mina. That's a beautiful name. All right, Mina, do you ever go to McDonald's? You do? You shouldn't go to McDonald's. The food's bad for you. But you know, when I go there, uh, especially in the summer months, all the drinks are one price, like any size drink for a dollar. So I always get the largest drink. But Mina, the straws at McDonald's are so short, they actually go down inside the drink and I lose them. So I need you to hold the straw for me. Thank you very much. And Mina, would you, would you drop it in this bag? Put the straw right in there. Perfect. Okay, Mina, do you remember the three magic words that McDonald's loves to hear? She doesn't. Okay, go ask your dad. Maybe he'll know. Go ask, go ask. Dad, do you know? Somebody? I'm loving it. No. Supersize me. Exactly. So I'll reach in here, pull the straw right out of the bag. Mina, how'd you do that? Very good. Give her a hand, you guys. Thank you, Mina. Well, I hope they have large drinks at, at the uh, cafe, because I'm, I'm taking that straw with me. That'll be fun. I think we're going we're gonna to have fun tonight, because we're going to play some games, and I have a short Christmas message that is rather uh, unusual, but then I'm rather unusual. Um, if you guys ever have a chance to listen to a radio station called uh, K-Wave, have you heard of it? Yes. Okay, good, good. Because since you guys moved up, I'm going to toss some t-shirts out to people in front. Let's see, one to each section, one there, and then one way over there. Perfect. And I have more. I have more. I'm going to give away some more. But uh, I'm very happy to be on the air at K-Wave uh, on the weekends, uh, Saturday morning for the Saturday Morning Kids Show, and then also Sunday nights from uh, 8 to midnight. But uh, my good friends Bob Shaw there in the morning, Kathy Parrish midday. Hi, Kathy, if you're watching. I think she said she was going to try. And hi, Mom. I, uh, her mom was going to be with her. Uh, and then... Uh, Oh, Michael, David, and just a, a good group of folks. And um, uh, of course, I'm on the San Diego station, but it doesn't stop me from dabbling at K-Wave from time to time. But what I want to try right now is another one of those weird, weird illusions that I do. I need a volunteer, an adult, an adult volunteer who can read. That pretty much, what, narrows it down? I hope not. All right, let's see. 
Somebody need an adult. I see people pointing at people. No, 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 no. We're going to use somebody in this section right here. Okay, wait. If you point at people, I automatically pick you. Oh. All right. So I'm going to pick you right there in the middle. Yeah, yeah, you. Come on up here. Give her a hand. Yes. I saw you pointing at people. No, I'm sorry. You, she can't use any help. No, no, no. I need you up here, please. You look closer to an adult than that young person right there. Thank you for coming up, though. What is your name, please? Victoria. Victoria. Come right here. You can stand in front of the mic. Victoria, it's nice to have you up here. All right, Victoria, I have a 600-page book. Uh, and you said you can read because I saw you pointing at people. So <laughs> what I want you to do is hold this book. If you just start reading it, would you just let us know when you're finished? We'll wait, won't we, folks? Let's just wait. 600 pages. <laughs> okay. Don't think you'll finish. Well, that's fair. Then I'll tell you what I want you to do. Just thumb through the book, glance through all the pages, kind of riffle through them, and see if all the pages are different. Make sure that nothing's been changed. It's a real book. Uh, for example, a magician or an illusionist might change a book so that every page is the same and then easier to memorize. But this book has every page different. Would you agree? Yes. Over 600 different pages. In fact, hundreds of thousands of words I like to say very likely over a million different words in that book. And your name once more. Victoria. Okay, I was just testing you. That's correct. <laughs> I have memory issues. Okay. And your no, I got it. Okay. Victoria, what I want you to do is I'm going to turn my back to you. I'm not going to look at the well, I will look at the screen. But I won't see you up there. I want you to open the book to any page. And I want you to focus on one word on that page, memorize the word, and then slap the book closed so I know you're done. Is she done? She's done. That wasn't a very loud slap. Could you do it one more time? That's better. Okay, great. Excellent. I knew you had it in you. I have a Post-it notepad, and what I like to do is... Uh, give you this pencil. I borrowed it from the Carnival Cruise Line, so I need to return it, okay? <laughs> All right, so Victoria, what I want you to do this time is I want you to write the word down on that post-it note in all caps, fairly large, because I want you then to go down the steps and show it to that couple you were sitting next to. Okay. Show the word, all right, don't, don't, don't show me. Write it on there and let me know when you have done that. Okay. All right, go show them the word. That'll keep you honest because, you know, you look a little shifty. <laughs> uh, trying to be honest here. She's looking at the word. I can't see anything. Uh, that's because I don't have my glasses on. Okay, okay good. Uh, would you come on up here? Stand by the microphone. Toss me the pencil. I don't need you to hold that anymore. In fact, good toss. Thank you. At least it didn't go, oh, okay. Uh, uh, give me the book. Oh, wait, you have the note on. You guys can hear me now, though, right? Aha. That's a T-Mobile commercial. Okay, so, Victoria, when I asked you to open the book, did I say to open it to page 348 or 349? I didn't. In fact, I said you could open it to any, any page at all. And I didn't say use, like, the first word or the last word or anything like that.
okay? Now you just got to figure there out the... you go. Woo! All right, let's hear it for this great guy. Let's, let's turn it off and tell him the batteries went out again. All right, Victoria. I have a, a simple solution for trying to figure out which word out of the million different words you'd be drawn to. And what I do is I learn a little bit about the person, and then I, that tells me what they would go to. So, Victoria, you can talk into the mic because you're close enough to that. What I want to know is, do you have any pets right now? I do. Okay. Are you a cat person or a dog person? A dog person. You're a dog person. All right. All right, settle down, dog people. All right, do you have a favorite color, Victoria? I do, yellow. Yellow, okay, great. Well, that works out well also. And do you have a favorite number? This is random. I do. Really, what is it? Seven. Seven yellow dogs. Seven yellow dogs. That tells me you'd be drawn to one word and one word only. I have written it down. Would you announce to everybody what the word was that you chose out of the whole book? Noon. Mm -hmm. I was close. I said moon. That's okay. <laughs> Give her a hand anyway. That's yours. Sit down. What I meant was on the moon at noon. Okay. Oh my goodness. I'm slipping already. All right. Let's make it up. Uh, let's see. I think I'll come back to that. Oh, I. I brought the vegetable slicer, so just in case anybody has some, I don't know, carrots, cucumbers, uh, watermelons you need sliced, we'll, we'll help you out. Uh, let's see. Thank you so much to the awesome tech people here. They've done a great job, seriously. That hiccup was my fault. I didn't let them put new batteries in, and uh, I just, I, I should have reminded them. But seriously, uh, Thank you to the church staff, the pastors, for inviting me back. You guys have such a wonderful, friendly congregation. This is a really great church. I'm saying that because if you're just visiting tonight, I want you to come back. Yeah, I mean, come and enjoy Christmas music and uh, friendly people. You will be welcomed and you'll be blessed. And, uh, you know, you won't even feel bad about coming to church. So I hope that you have fun tonight, too. Let's see. Uh, I would like to um, like to play a game, and you know, Victoria, Victoria, you were so helpful, and I messed up with you. I'm going to have you help me with this next thing, so give her a hand, everybody. She was just getting comfortable. All right, and uh, let's see. Can I get the house lights up for this particular thing? We're going to play a game. Victoria's going to help me, and uh, I want everyone to know that whoever wants to play can. You don't have to play. All you have to do is stand up, all right? That includes kids. You can just stand up. Oh, come on. Don't be a bunch of stuck in the muds. Come on, moms and dads, stand up. Don't, yeah, everybody stand up. Come on. Come on, dads, be a good example. There you go. Okay, great. All right, so now here's what we're going to do. We're going to play a, a quick elimination game. So if you get it wrong, you'll have to sit down, okay? And then the last person standing will win a prize from the radio station and from me. Wow, that's going to be tough. I can't see a thing. Let's try it again this way. Okay, I can see that way. But first, I want Victoria to look at this coin. Step to the microphone. Victoria, would you tell everybody what it is? She's not sure. It's, it's a, a half dollar. It's a half dollar. It's so 50 cents. And are there legitimately two sides to that coin? Heads and tails. Yes. Yes, there are. It's not fake in any way. I can't switch it. It's a real coin. Okay. So what I'm going to do is, in fact, I'm going to stand on this side of you because I, I'm going to slap it on my arm. I'm not even going to look, and you're going to announce in the microphone what that is, and that will tell 50% of the group probably to sit down. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay, so here's how the game works. If you're standing right now, and if you vote, you have to vote heads or tails, right? When I throw it in the air, that's when you must decide what you're going to vote. Your hand will go up, just one hand. 
if it's heads. If your hand stays down, you're voting tails. Okay? So if you don't participate, you're going to get tails automatically. But let's see how long you last. We're going to do this. Never done it with a group this size before. Let's see if we can go through it pretty quick. All right. First of all, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> you're not supposed to say it. You're supposed to vote with a hand. Heads or no hands, tails. Everybody clear? Is it still heads or tails? Yes. Excellent. Okay. All right. Here we go. Let's see those votes and vote. Okay. Heads. If you voted heads, sit, stay standing. If you voted heads, stay standing. All the tails, sit down. All right. Quite a few of you. Okay. Here we go. You can put your arms down, sir. Thank you. Okay. All right. Here we go. All right. Get ready to vote if you're still standing. Heads or tails. Ready? Go. I can't even see that high. Heads it is. If you had your hand up, stay standing. If your hand was down, sit down. Come on, you guys got to be honest now. Not everybody voted heads over there. We're going to be watching you very closely. All right, heads or tails. Here we go. Call it in the air, folks. Wait, you didn't vote? What is it? Tails. If you voted tails, you voted tails, stay standing. All the folks who voted heads, sit down. Okay, here we go. Here, here we go, here we go. We're narrowing it down fast. I think we're going to take that whole group out next. Watch. <laughs> here we go. Heads or tails, call it in the air. Wait, okay. Wait a minute. Whoop. No, no, no. Whoa, I'm so sorry. Well, I don't know what it was. Here we go. Sorry, here we go. Call it in the air. I, 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 hold on. I can't see when I throw it into light. I have to do it this way. I really can. It hits the light, and I don't know that, where to catch it. Still heads or tails, right? Correct. Good. Thank you, Victoria. Keep me honest. Okay, call it in the air, people. Not literally. Okay, what is the answer? Tails. Tails. Ah, oh, there goes a big group. All right. Okay. All right, let's see, we have, how many people are left here? Raise your hand so I can see if you're still in it. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Call it in the air, people. I'm going to turn this way. Call it in the air. Tails. Tails. If you voted tails, is that correct? Was it Tails. Was it tails? What? It says heads. No, no, it does say heads and tails. Okay, it was tails. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trust you. All right, here we go. How many are left? One, two, three, four. Four people. Here we go. Get ready. Call it in the air. Call it. I can't see it at all. Tails. Tails. Wait a minute. One person standing? Over there. Okay, wait. I need you guys to come up here. Come up here. Come on. You got to stand in front. Sir, no, not on the stage. Right there. What is your, what is your name, man? Did you bring like a whole cheer, cheering crowd or something? Where are your fans? All right, there we go. Okay, good. All right, was there anybody else? Did I miss anybody? Just two of you left. All right, so now this is for the big prize. Okay, so do me a favor. Watch what each other is voting, and you vote something different. Okay, here we go. All right, here we go. Otherwise, we're going to have tie after tie. All right, ready, set, go. You can't both vote the same thing. Here we go. Somebody's got a break. Here we go. One, two, three. Call it. The winner is? Heads. Heads is the winner. Wait, Victoria. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait just a minute. You, young man, I got a t-shirt for you. I got a beautiful ornament for you filled with chocolate. You're welcome. Give her a hand. Victoria, 
I got a t-shirt for you for helping out. Thank you very much. Give them all a hand. They did great. Wow, that was fun. That was just a little, uh, little something I'm trying, trying out. Uh, now I have uh, the opportunity to uh, have another volunteer, an adult volunteer this time. An adult. I need an adult because this is a psychological test. So there may be some people. So look at her. It's pulling those hands down. All right, sir, you come on up here. Yes, sir. Yeah, you come on up. Oh, no, 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 that gentleman right there. Nice try, buddy. I can't win. <laughs> I tried to get him up here. All right, that's perfect. Your, your name, sir? Oscar. Oscar. Yeah. You, you go to this church? Okay, sweet. Yeah, you better come up here. Well done, Oscar. All right. Stay right there by the mic. Just to be fair, I was pointing at that guy, but you're up here, and we're going to go with it. And he's a big guy. I'm not sure I would want to get him upset anyway, but you, I don't mind getting upset, Oscar. So <laughs> I don't even know what that means. So this is called a Stroop test. You ever heard of a Stroop test? No. It's a rather strange thing. It actually is a legitimate psychological test. Uh, and it involves a whole bunch of things. It involves uh, some cards and some words on the cards. But the words are words of colors, but the colors don't match the words. So it's designed to kind of test your psyche a little bit. So right into the microphone, what I want you to do is, first of all, read the words, ignore the colors. OK, you are ready? Go, sir. Yellow. Correct. Green. Slow, slower. Red. Okay, good. I want to make sure you do it accurately. Orange, Orange is correct. Pink. Uh-huh. Blue. Okay. Purple. And one more. Brown. Very good. He did it very well, didn't he? Yeah. All right. Oscar, you got, you got your fans over there cheering for you. That's awesome. All right. Now it gets tougher. Now I want you to say the colors, not the words. And you'll find that the the subconscious wrestles with the conscious about what to say. So say it into the microphone. Do me a favor. Ready, set, go. Orange. Orange is correct. Purple. Yes. Yellow. Okay. Green. Uh-huh. Black. That's correct. Pink. Okay. Brown. That's right. Blue. And blue. He did it very well. Now, I'm sorry. I said this was a psychological test. Uh, it isn't. Would you read the words at the bottom out loud? It says a psychological experiment. Experiment. So we're going to be experimenting on you right now to find out how manipulatable your brain is. <laughs> so there are eight cards of different colors. Give me a number between one and eight. Five. Five. All right. Let's see what you came up with. One, two, three four, five. You came up with the word blue. And actually, on the back of this card is a prediction that I wrote. Would you take this card, turn it over, and read it out loud to everybody into the microphone? <laughs> you will choose blue. Give him a hand, everybody. Oscar, there you go. Oh, whoa. Oh, almost took him out. Mm. You did great. Ah, oh, this is fun. Are you guys having fun? Okay, should I continue or cut it short? Okay, good. Wasn't sure, wasn't sure. I'm open to, you know, I'm open to leaving early. Uh, but I'm having fun. And, uh, that, you know, I do a little bit of uh, illusions entertainment, but it's also designed to try to make you think a little bit. For example, right now I have uh, three big cards. I have two queen of hearts and an ace of spades. I think it's spades. Yep, it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix them up, and I'm going to put one of the queens right there where you'll be able to see it, keep an eye on it, make sure it doesn't move. I've got the ace and the queen now in my hands. So watch closely because I'm going to mix these up, shuffle. This is how you shuffle big cards. Trust me, it's much easier than 
actually shuffling. So now I have the ace and the queen right here. And, oh, wait a minute, the two queens. So what's over here? The ace, that's correct. See, somebody was paying attention. All right, let's see if I can fool you a second time. Okay, watch closely. I'm going to take it, flip them around. I'm going to put the, uh, I'll put the queen right there this time. And now I have the ace and the queen in my hand. So watch closely because this happens very fast. You see it already? Now I have the ace and the queen. No, wait a minute. So what's right here? Ace, that's correct. You guys are good. You guys are sharp. Can't believe you, uh, you knew that. All right, well, here's a test for the kids because I've been leaving them out. Let's see. Somebody might even remember this. I did this last year. Okay, if you remember it, that's okay. Watch first and then see if you can figure it out. Okay, watch. If I pull this string, nothing happens. But if I pull this string, what happens? The other one goes up. That's correct. Very good. You remember. So, and if I pull this one, it makes that one go up. And if I pull this one, it makes that one go up. So does anybody have a theory about how it works? Your hand shot up in the second row. What, what did you think? Um, that, they're that they're connected and it's one string, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good guess, but that's definitely not it. <laughs> uh, but that's a good guess. My sleeve. No, it's not my sleeve. All right. Would you come up here, please? Yes, you. Would you help me? Here, just pull that string down for me. It's amazing. Wow, that is so weird. How did you do that? Okay, go ahead. Sit down. All right, let me see. You, sir. You in the set. Yeah, you. Right there. Because when boys do it, there's weird things happen. I'm just, yeah. Oh, see? I knew that would happen. Thank you. That's okay. It's okay. You didn't break them. You didn't break them. Uh... But there is, uh, there's an invisible thread right there. Can you see it? Yeah. No, you can't. It's invisible. <laughs> but I just grab that, you see, and I just pull them both up that way. Yeah. Put that away for you. There you go. Okay, maybe one more test for the kids. All right, this one's a little bit more complicated. A red rope with three yellow knots. And, of course, I have a purple scarf tied to the first knot. I call it the monkey scarf because monkeys are purple. Okay, so here we go. Yeah, Google it later, sir. Okay. <laughs> All right. So watch closely. Something very weird happens when I make it jump to the other side. <laughs> hang on, hang on, hang on. Wait, I'm going to concentrate. Okay. No, I'm just not feeling it. Hang on. Okay. Ah. Okay. And I made it jump back. Thank you very much. Wait, does somebody know how it's done? Wait, what do you think, young lady? Um, you, you turn it around. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, I turn it around like this? Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> I try to fool kids, and I just can't. Okay, so you're right. I was just turning the rope around to make it look like it was jumping to the other side. You know, if I were a really good illusionist, I'd make it jump to the middle, but I have no idea how to do that. So, no, no, I've been trying. I know. I've been trying. I cannot do that. It has been, no, no, I've been trying, really. All right, let's see. Now I need a very brave teenager. You, sir. Right on the end. You, sir. Yeah, you. Come on up here, man. High five. High five. Hey, okay, come on up here. Come on up. No, no, come on up here. Come on up here. I'm just teasing. I was testing you. Come on, come on. Here we go. What is your name, sir? Uh, Jojo. Jojo, you don't, you don't have to stand there. Come on over here. High five, bud. Seriously. You can do it. Ah, okay. Man, you're strong. All right, Jojo. Uh, this involves, um, it's like a vegetable slicer. Some call it a guillotine, but I, I think that's unfair to just call it that, and uh, you're pretty brave. I can tell because you raised your hand and you don't mind coming up here, do you? No. Great, Jojo, here's what I want you, take off this uh, sweater first, yeah, thank you, good. Okay, because I need, I need to be able, yeah, we'll just throw it right here, you can grab it later, All right. okay. <laughs> Actually, we could use that to clean up any blood. Anyway, um, so if you, are you left-handed or right-handed? Right-handed, right -handed. so if you 
we had an accident and you lost a hand, which one would it be? The left hand. Okay, perfect. Good. Because I was counting on that. Jojo, would you do me a favor? Uh, this is my little... Here, let me, let me stand here so you can see it a little better. Uh, this is perfectly safe, kids. Don't try this at home, but it's perfectly safe. I'll just show you how it works. It's, uh, it's got a little holder, and it has a little... It's a wooden blade, so worst that's going to happen is you'll get a splinter, okay? But watch, when I drop it through here, watch through the opening there. You'll be able to see it as it passes right through. Do it very quickly. You won't feel a thing. Okay. You aren't nervous, are you? Okay. All right, here we go. I'm just getting it ready here. Okay, would you do me a favor? Would you stand right here and put your left arm right through there? Whoa, you're doing great. You're doing great. Okay, now you might want to look away in case there's any accidents. Let's hear it for JoJo. One. One. Two. Okay, three. Wait a minute. Don't move. Don't move. That is so weird. JoJo, would you... Would you Give this guy a hand, because he, he can have a hand. Jojo, high five, buddy. Grab your jacket. That's amazing. I don't know how you did it. I got a nice official K-Wave beanie for you, buddy. All right. Give him a hand. Nicely done. Wow, I always get splinters when I do that. That's amazing. All right, we'll put that away. Uh, very interesting. Oh, uh, I, I would love to, oh, let me do this one more thing and then, and then we'll, we'll get down to something a little more uh, unusual or serious, which is unusual for me to be serious. Let's see, I'm missing my cards. Uh, I think I put them, where did I put them? Nope, they're not here. That's okay, I've got cards everywhere. Um, got a deck of cards here. 52 different cards. I don't have any jokers, and I would like uh, an adult to help me with this. You don't even have to leave your seat. I need somebody who's familiar with cards, somebody maybe that plays uh, solitaire, bridge, blackjack, poker. Uh, oh, that, I saw that hand, sir. I saw that hand. I knew I've seen you in the casino. No, no anyway. What is your name, sir? Danny. Manny. Sandy. <laughs> That's the turtle. Manny, right? Randy. Wow. It's a, it's a tough crowd. Okay. <laughs> I love you guys. This is fun. Randy, I have a whole deck of cards here. No jokers. Okay? You and I can be the two jokers. Randy, um, let's clarify. Did I come talk to you before the show? Have we ever talked or met before? We have not. So, Randy, what I want you to do is think of a single card in the deck. Just choose one at random. Let me know when you've got it. Yes, I got, it. got it. Great. Say it out loud. That'll hold you accountable. Okay, that's not going to work. Somebody else. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Seven of clubs is a great choice. Do you know why it's a great choice, Randy? Why? I was hoping you'd tell me. It's a great choice because most people, nine times out of ten, choose an ace. Ace is like the first choice when I ask audiences coast to coast, even overseas I've done this, people choose ace of spades, ace of hearts, but you went with a seven of clubs, which shows that you're thinking kind of outside the box. It may be a little box, but you're thinking outside it, Randy. <laughs> you're a big guy. I know you can take the hit. All right, let me just show you what I did. You're going to keep me honest. This is the empty box. These are the cards. And just in case you chose an ace, I put all four aces face up in this deck. But you didn't choose an ace, right? But I will show you. There's the ace of hearts. Check this out. Look, ace of clubs. Uh, here's the ace of diamonds. And here is the ace of spades. So I have all four aces right here out of the deck. Let me just pull them out. And I'll just be honest with you. Do you see any other aces face up in this deck? No, there are only four aces in a deck. So here's what I did. I took these four aces, and before I came tonight, I took a moment 
used a sharpie and I wrote a note on the back of these four aces. And do you know what it says? It said, the seven of clubs. Give that man a hand. Are we still having fun? Great. What I want to do is, uh, I think I've got time for, and I've totally lost track of time. Okay, well, they said I could go till 11, so that's good. Okay. No, I'm kidding. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be wrapping up soon, but I do have to show you this because I've, I was taking some art classes recently, and uh, uh, here we go. I want to demonstrate my artistic skills, so I'm thinking... That gentleman right there in the blue plaid jacket. Yes, sir. You. Oh, no, no, no. Yes, sir. Come on up here. Give him a hand, everybody. <laughs> and just stand on the top stair there. What is your name, sir? Louis. Louis, would you face everybody, please? All right, Louis. Yeah, that's right. Wave in there. Now, Louis. All right, Louis. Let me see. Just glance over here. That's, that's good. That's good. All right. All right, Louis. Ah, you're, you're looking good, man. I'm telling you. I, I'm really going to do my best to make this look like photo quality, okay? And I think you're going to really... Wait, well, let me get one more look here. My glasses are off right here. Okay, yeah, okay. He's got a little bit of hair on the chin. Uh, no, not a little. He's looking good. All right. Okay. Now, you guys be honest. I can take the criticism, but doesn't this look a lot like Louie? <laughs> I think it does. What? What? No, no, no. The, no, it's just a drawing, kids. It's just a drawing. Yeah, isn't that right, Louie? What's that? It's whoa. It's you. That's so weird. It's weird that you said that. Right, Louie? That's right. Okay, wait a minute. I'll tell you what. Here's what I found. Is that as an artist, I found that if I... If I sign the artwork, it makes it even more valuable. <laughs> you don't mind, do you? Oh, no. Okay. Here we go. Sign that. And then, Louis, I'm going to give this to you, and then afterwards you can show everybody how it works. Give him a hand for being a good sport. That's my Christmas gift to you, Louis. When I come visit your house, it better be hanging on a wall. Don't let your wife take it down. Okay. Hey, now, in all seriousness, uh, we are in church, but I got to tell you, uh, I'm a Christian, and I have, I've had the most fun as a Christian, even before I became a Christian, much more fun than I did back then. In fact, uh, my, my testimony is kind of ugly, and I will, I'll spare you the details, but I will tell you this, <clears throat> that I was running away from God. In fact, when people say, uh, who do you most identify with in the Bible? A lot of people say, oh, Peter or Paul or, you know, Adam. I don't know. Me, Noah. Because whatever God was reaching out to Noah and asking him to do something, what did Noah do? He went the other direction. And that's what I can relate to the most because before I knew God, before I had Jesus in my life, I was running from God. And I got to the point where it nearly took my life. Like I said, I'll spare you the sort of details, but if I had succeeded in ending my life, I wouldn't be here tonight. And that's kind of a sobering thought. I wouldn't have my wife of 44 years. I wouldn't have three grown, amazing young people for kids and four terrific grandchildren. And I wouldn't have had the opportunity to be a blessing to literally tens of thousands of people. Uh, around the country, even around the world. And that is because God intervened in my path of destruction. He did. He saved me. Now, let's talk for a little bit about that. For example, I've got this little box here. It's painted black on the outside, and it's red and white on the, on the outside, painted black on the inside. And uh, it's pretty cool. You can see right through it. In fact, it has some holes in it, which are, they serve a purpose, believe it or not. If I take this yellow block, it doesn't matter what side, but I'm just showing you, uh, and it's, it's 
It doesn't open in any way. What's your name, sir? Peter. Peter, would you stand up and catch this? Good catch. Would you try to open that for me, please, without breaking it? It doesn't open, does it? It's, it's sealed closed. But it's hollow. Yeah. Okay, so now toss it back to me. Oh, I knew you were going to do that. <laughs> I hope you have insurance, sir. <laughs> so what I do is I put the yellow block inside this box, turn it upside down, and then you can see it through the big holes. In fact, you can see it there if I tilt it that way. But what's easy is it's easy to keep track of where the yellow block is. So I'm going to put this yellow block inside the red box, and then I'm going to take this wooden stake, and I'm going to run it through the sides where the holes are. Now it has gone through the yellow block, and it permanently locks it in place. So the yellow block cannot get free on its own. It's just like before I was a Christian, I couldn't save myself. You know, it's like Try to picture a drowning person in a lake reaching up and pulling up on their hair. That doesn't work. They're going to drown without assistance, without help, intervention. And God intervened in my life just like he's going to do with this little yellow block. Because just like this yellow block, I reached the point in my life where I couldn't get any lower in my life. Seriously, I came this close to dying because a police officer was pointing his gun at me and I was very, very tempted to pretend that I have a gun. And that would have ended my life right there. And just like this yellow block, I couldn't free myself. But one day, that day in fact, I surrendered from running for away from God. I turned my life and heart over to Jesus and he miraculously set me free and the way that he did it, I'll just show you. Oh, my, my stake fell apart. I will show you how he did it, because this holds it together. And that is, it was through his great work on the cross. Amen? And let's face it, uh, I like what, David, what Dr. David Jeremiah said this morning, and that is, without the cross... Um, there's no point in having the cradle in the nativity. In other words, Jesus came as a baby to save us. And the way that he had to do it was to take our punishment, which meant he had to die on the cross, taking all the sin of the world, and then he defeated sin and death by raising on the third day. Now, I want to ask you a question here. Think about this for a second. What are some of the signs of Christmas? Now, you don't have to answer. Let me just tell you. I've been looking around and looking like at department stores, bumper stickers. There are a lot of common signs that indicate it's Christmas time. Did anybody want to throw out some ideas of what they might see on those signs? Merry Christmas? Yeah? Anything else? Happy holidays? That's a pretty common one. I can't see your hands if you're raising your hand, because I, I honestly can't see. I'm sorry. Uh, you're, just, you're a giant blur to me. I'm, so, I'm really sorry. I'm sure you're all very nice people, but you're all very blurry. Be jolly. Be jolly. Be jolly. Yes. What's another one? Joyful. Be joyful or, joyful or joy. Or joy, 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 right? Yeah, it's at, at Christmas time, we, we think about being joyful. You know what else I've seen? Well, let me just tell you. I saw a couple of signs... Uh, here's one of them. Making a Christmas wish, you won't get your car, or excuse me, let me read this right. I'm on the radio. I should know how to read this. Making a Christmas wish won't get your car back. This is a no parking tow-away zone. <laughs> so I kind of like that sign, a little sense of humor, but it's also serious. You know, you park there, you're going to lose your car. No amount of Christmas wishing is going to get it back. Here's another one. This was in an office I saw on somebody's sign on their door. Ho, ho, hold on. Do not disturb me. Okay. Uh, here's one I saw. Uh, a church had this one posted out front. Are you part of the in crowd or one of the stable few? I thought that was clever. Uh, but, you know, here's some signs that actually appeared in front of churches. Christmas, easier to spell than Hanukkah. 
Well, okay, that's just, well, it is. Okay. Don't hold me responsible. I'm just the messenger. Okay. Uh, here's another sign that was seen in front of a church. Mary wrapped the first Christmas present. That's pretty good, huh? That's pretty clever. Uh, here's another sign that was posted in front of a church. We're the only people forgiving enough to tolerate your horrifying rendition of Silent Night. Okay, well, that's brutally honest. Uh, let's see. Oh, here's one I did like. Christmas is not your birthday. Well, that takes some thinking about that one, because it's all about me, right, in the holidays. But you know, the most common or popular sign that I've seen is simply the word, maybe you've seen this, believe. And what do you think the world means when they post those signs? I've seen people who, who don't even go to church, they have a wooden sign on their mantle that says, believe. And do you think they're, they're thinking about, like, a fat guy in a red suit and a flying reindeer? Uh, what is it that the world wants to believe at Christmas time? They probably want to believe in things like the season, keeping it vague, right? Uh, the spirit of Christmas, what, what in the world is that? Uh, is that the spirit of giving or the spirit of shopping, right? Or spending? Uh, maybe it's believe your credit card bills won't come until next year. I don't. Um, and that really doesn't require faith. It just requires bad financial planning. Um, but why is it easier for the world to believe in flying reindeer instead of a baby who was born to die? Have you ever thought about that? The world wants to get into the mood and the joy and the celebration of Christmas but they don't want any of the attachments, you know, like the baby in the manger, or they might just like acknowledge it, but that's it. For tonight, my admonition to you is, do not believe in magic. What I do is simply illusions. Now, they're, they're fun. Some of them are challenging, and some of them really make you wonder, how did he do that? But magic will not save you. And everybody has illusions that we live with all the time. We have an illusion of personal safety. That's an illusion. Uh, a friend of mine sells burglar alarms, and he says all the time, people want to believe they're safe if they get an alarm, but it doesn't mean you're going to be safe. Uh, there are illusions about a lot of things in our lives. I have an illusion that I'm going to lose a lot of weight and be my weight in high school again. But that's an illusion. Or it's maybe it's a delusion, I think is much safer to say. But I use, I use illusions for entertainment and obviously to share my faith. But the Bible does say, believe. Here's what it says. In Acts 16, it says, believe on the Lord Jesus and both you and your household will be saved. And that's what Christmas is all about. Believing that a baby was sent to grow into a man to take your sin onto himself to die on a cross, a cruel death, and then to defeat death three days later and raise himself from the grave. I like what 1 Peter 1.8 says. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. So when we say joy to the world, that's really what we're talking about. We want the world to know the joy that only Jesus can bring, right? And let's face it, there are a lot of people who are happy, but they're not joyful. They don't have joy in their life. And I don't know that I could define joy. It's, it's a little bit nebulous, but I will say it's an underlying peace and constant feeling even 
even a feeling of joy despite circumstances in your life. So when you have problems, which you're going to have, everyone does, or if you have an emergency or a crisis, you may be sad, you may be upset, you may be angry, but it's, as a believer, we have joy in our faith in Christ. And that joy doesn't get taken away. The enemy tries to steal our joy, but God does not allow that to happen. If we lean into Him, we trust Him, He gives us great joy. In fact, He gives us an abundant life. And I'll tell you, since, since the day that I nearly ended my life, God has only given me an abundant life since then. I never had it before. And it was the strangest thing. Instead of me trying to get it and try to fill something in my life that I couldn't fill, I simply had to give up and surrender and turn to God and ask Jesus into my life and, and ask forgiveness for my sins. And amazingly, joy flooded in. Grace from God, forgiveness from God, love from God, unconditional love, love I had really never experienced before that day. So I would urge you, especially during the holiday season, to think about what it is you believe in. Now, maybe you want to believe in that big fat guy with the red cloak or whatever, and you know that he goes into everybody's living room through fireplaces or fake fireplaces or whatever, uh, vents, uh, heaters, I don't know. Or do you want to believe in something with a little more substance, something that will give you eternal joy and solidity, just, you know, solidity in your life, in your spiritual life? Because everybody's craving for that kind of joy, and I'm telling you, that's where you can, that's where you can get it. So let's do this. I have a couple more things I want to do, but I want the ushers to grab those cards and uh, pass out those cards to the adults and the teenagers. Uh, you guys have your cards? You're ready to go? Good. Start doing that now. Work your way from the back forward. That way I'll know kind of when you're done. Oh, some of you already have them. I'm going to have you get four cards each. And I want, uh, yeah, we might need some extra help. I think we've got a lot of ushers here. They're working hard right now. In fact, while they're doing that, I'm going to do some other things. So let's do this. Let's play a little, little game here. Have I already asked for your help? You. What is your name? Rachel. Rachel? That's correct. It is. Okay. Uh, let's see. I've already asked you. Could you help me? What is your name? Dina, would you come here, please? Would you verify to everybody that these cards are all different or are they all the same? They are all different. Perfect. Would you do me a favor? I want you to say stop as I'm thumbing through. Stop. You're supposed to say stop as I'm thumbing through. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. This time you can just shorten it to stop. Stop. Okay, perfect. Would you take that card and go sit down? I don't need it anymore. Thank you, Dina. I just wanted to see if you'd do it. Thank you. Okay, you did great. And uh, your name, please? Rachel. Rachel, did I talk to you ahead of time? In the cafe? No, I didn't? Okay, well, maybe I meant to choose somebody else. No, I'm kidding. So you and I didn't plan anything in advance. Okay, perfect. Rachel, were you here last year? You weren't? Oh, you are in trouble then, because you are going to get stuck playing the mystery envelope game. Rachel, inside this mystery envelope, I have a single word. Now, you know the word, but I want you to think in your mind, what could it be? I'm going to try to telepathically give you that message, I, like that could happen. You're going to say the word out loud, and I'm going to show everybody that you got it right. Are you ready? Okay. Rachel, are you ready, really? No. <laughs> Have you ever done this before? No, that's amazing. <laughs> wow, you did very well for your first time. Okay, she did very well. I'm not going to pick her on her. Okay, well, I will pick on you one more thing. Now, there are no more words in here, Rachel. There's a photograph, though, of a famous person. Could be a man, could be a woman, 
could be an actor, a singer, a politician, a president, somebody that you thought of. Now, you'll have to be honest. When I said a famous person, who did you think of? And I'm going to show you their photograph. Are you ready? Rachel, who did you think of? A few. Narrow it down to one famous person, please. Okay, well, I don't have a photograph of Jesus, so that, <laughs> that rules Jesus out. Do you want me to be honest? I want you to be honest. Who did you think of? Instead of Trump. Trump, Baron Trump, Ivanka Trump, uh, oh, Donald Trump. Donald Trump. Really? Okay, I'm not going to make any judgments. This is a partisan group. There are people who have different feelings about politics. I have... No feelings about politics. But I will tell you that I have a photograph of Donald Trump in here. I'm going to show you the photograph right now. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, here's a photograph of Donald Trump as a baby. <laughs> and uh, just in case uh, you were going to choose somebody from the other party and you said Barack Obama, I was ready for you. <laughs> You got to be flexible. You got to be flexible. Dina, Dina, you chose one card out of the entire deck. Would you hold that up in the air and say in a loud voice what it was? Because there's a note in here with your name on it. What is it? The King of Clubs. Give Dina a hand. Give Rachel a hand. Just throw it at me. Just throw it at me. That's fine. We'll figure that out later. Did you guys need more cards? Is that why you were coming up here? Okay, ushers, come on here. Come get some more cards. Here we go. I'm going to put you to work. Good man. All right. Who else needs cards? They do. You guys get cards? Somebody send an emissary. You, sir, come on up here. Give them four cards to every adult and preteen and up. Like uh, 11 or 12. Make sure you see an ID. Like a driver's license would be fine. Okay, meanwhile, I'm going to do this for you. I, uh, I brought these. Oh, here, let me undo these ropes. I have them all tied up. No, they are not monkey colors. What are you talking about? Monkey doodle. Monkey doodle. A monkey noodle, of course. Okay, so I'll tell you. Um, actually, these, these three ropes represent... Uh, do you guys need some more cards? You guys need more cards? I'll throw some your way. Here, let's not, okay. Let's not mess around. Who needs more cards? Come get them, sir. Come. Give that man half the cards. Here we go. All right, so you guys need more cards? Look, I got more cards. More cards. Look at this. Get the cards. Here we go. Here we go. Cards for you. Don't start a poker game back there without me, okay? My goodness. Okay. If you're a kid, you can't do it. I'm sorry. It's got to be, it's got to be teenagers and up. All right. So, okay. Watch closely. Because what I have here is a yellow or a golden rope. And this golden rope reminds me of God the Father. Because the Bible says that God the Father is in heaven... And what are the streets they're made of? They are made of gold. That's pretty cool. So that's the rope that reminds me of God the Father. And then there's God the Holy Spirit. And this green rope reminds me that when we have the Holy Spirit in our life, we can grow in our faith. So that's why I use the green rope to remind myself about the Holy Spirit. And then I have the red rope. And of course, that reminds me of God, His Son, Jesus Christ, right? And Jesus, that's right, sorry, but it's true. His work on the cross required that His blood be shed like a, like a lamb being sacrificed. He was the perfect, spotted, spotless, blameless lamb. So we have God the Father, God the Holy Spirit, and God's Son, Jesus. Now, don't think that there are three different gods. There are not. There's one God and the three persons, you see? And that is pretty cool, I think. 
Amen. All right. So do you have your four cards? Great. Great. Okay, we're not going to get to them. We're going to do it in just a minute. I need uh, one more helper, please. You in the green shirt. Yes, you. Yes, you. Nope, not you. The person behind her, behind you. All right, she, she was like, choose me. What is your name, please? Would you come on up here, please? Thank you very much. Come on, come on. Give her a hand. She's very brave to come all the way here. Very brave. And uh, let me ask you a question. What is your name? Kayla. Kayla. Kayla, do you mind helping me? All right, are you a good dancer? <laughs> Look at that face. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, Kayla, wait right here. Oh, I like your T-shirt. Here we go, Kayla. Come right over here. And you just hold these little pom-poms, the little white balls, right? And I grab this side. And then we just lift the, the, the drape and we put it back down. Perfect. It's just super easy. I dropped mine. Let's try it again. Lift them up. And then you put it back down. Okay. And then sometimes on the third time, something. Wait, whoa, whoa. Kayla, how are you doing this? Wait a minute. Whoa, Kayla, whoa, you better. A little higher, please. Thank you. This is really likes to dance. What can I say? Whoa, come back here. Whoa. Um, Kayla, would you do me a favor? Would you, on the count of three, just let go for me? One, two, three, let go. Okay, back up, back up. Because sometimes, whoa, hang on just a second. It just wants to go. Whoa, hang on. Oh, wait a minute. It loves the music. It loves to dance. <laughs> See? Isn't that crazy? I don't know how you're doing this. You're, do, you're not even holding on to it. Now, sometimes kids say, let it go, let it go, but that's a different movie. So, I just, what I do is I let it go, and I just put that there. And that's usually what makes it work. But sometimes, whoa, sometimes, no, sometimes it still flies. Whoa. Coming after you, coming after you. No, better not. Okay, wait a minute. I'll tell you what. I'm going to push this down because otherwise if it goes up there I may never get it so let me set that down and I'll just put this away and everybody give a hand to Kayla for a great job thank you very much have a seat wow how, how did she don't tell anybody okay Kayla don't tell anybody how you did it all right I've got uh t-shirts but these are only for Let's just say um, people. Okay, wait. <laughs> Only for adults. All right, and wait a minute. What is your name, sir, in the blue? No, you, you helped me earlier. Randy. Randy, this one's for you. Oh, sure. Thank you. I need you at every show. That would be fun. <laughs> Okay, and then you, sir, in the orange, peach, pink, peach. What is your name? Salmon. Salmon. What is your name, sir? That's correct, it is. Here you go, buddy. That one's for you. Also short. You're very welcome. All right. Okay. I had to, I had to get rid of those because I didn't want to take them back to the station. Um, I'm, I'm having fun. I don't know if you guys are. Hang on just a second. Let me get rid of that. If you've got your four cards, let's do one more thing before I wrap up, uh, and, and then uh, uh, we'll, we'll play with the cards. But I need, I need a couple, a man and a woman here. In fact, you guys were pointing at each other, so I'm thinking now is your chance yeah, let's give them a hand. Come on up here, you guys, come on. No, 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 you too. Yeah, you too. Nice, I got you good. Oh, I love it when couples work together. See now, aren't you glad you put on the nice shirt tonight? Okay. Come on up here, guys, come on up here. I'll embarrass you a little bit more. Come on, come on. 
I'll get this out of your way. Yeah, you can applaud for them. All right, guys, come stand right here. First of all, your name, please. Lucia, Lucia and? Tim. Tim, excellent. Lucia, I'm going to give you a pencil. And Tim, I'm going to give you a pencil. But first, you have cards in your hand. Can you put them in a pocket? Perfect. No, good. Okay, good. All right. Here's what I just want to make sure you guys, your hands are free to, uh, to write something. In fact, I have, or I thought I had, I probably left it back here. Where did I put it? I know it's here somewhere. Don't go away. Don't go away. It's, it's close. Okay. This will have to do. I don't know why I put them in there, but I did. Okay. So I have little, little uh, cards, and these two cards are pre-folded. They probably can't see that far back, so I will fold one all the way so you can see it's demonstrated. It folds up into a small little square. So I'm going to give one to you, Tim, and one to you, Lucia. And I'm going to ask each of you to write something on this piece of paper. But I don't want the other person to see what you're going to write. Yeah, that's right. You got the right idea. Okay, so maybe stand back to back. That'd be good. Uh, and Tim, I'm going to put you on the spot. Tim, I want you to think of a famous person uh, down through history, if you want. Or you could just say the last 10 years, the last 100 years. It could be... a I don't know, president, politician, singer, actor, someone famous that people would recognize their name, I want you to write their name, that name, on your paper and then fold it closed. Okay? And Lucia, I would like you to think of any place in the world. All right? You get a big choice here. The whole planet. You can choose a, a theme park. You could choose a a monument, a tourist attraction, a city, a country, anywhere. Maybe it's someplace you've been. Maybe it's someplace you've always wanted to go. But I want you to write down the name of that place on your paper and then fold it closed. Don't let Tim look. He's taller than you. He's looking over your shoulder. Okay. Tim, did you finish writing? Yes. Good. Toss me the pencil then. Just toss it. Nice toss. Okay. Lucia, did you finish writing? Would you, did you fold it closed? Yes. Good. I'll take the pencil. See, I didn't trust her to throw it. <laughs> uh, okay. So, uh, Tim, keep your answer folded closed and give it to Lucia. Lucia, you get both answers. Excellent. Okay. Tim, you get to stand and supervise. Lucia, I want you to put one answer in each hand and put them behind your back. And I want you to mix them back and forth. Just shuffle them in your hands so that you're so confused, you're not even sure which one is which. Okay. All right, I think we can do this. This is a little weird. Okay. Are they really mixed up? Okay. Do you know which one's which? Okay, either do I. So what I want you to do is put one in each hand and close your fist around it and put them in front of you just like that. And then you choose one hand to put behind your back. Perfect. And you go around this way. Yeah, the, <laughs> It's a little tough that way. <laughs> That's great. Tim, make sure you tease her about that later. Okay. <laughs> Lucia, the one that is behind your back is the one that I'm going to try to make a prediction about, if that makes any sense. In other words, you're going to hold on to that, and we're going to disqualify this one. In fact, as soon as I touch it, we're disqualifying it. Okay. But first, I need uh, Peter, right? Would you come up here, Peter, and stand right here? I need you to keep me honest. All right, right here's good, yeah. But turn and face everybody. I don't like the way you're staring at me, man. <laughs> Teasing, okay. All right, because I'm going to need some paper. Oh, I'm going to need my lighter. And we are going to disqualify your first answer. The one that you chose not to keep. We're going to burn it. We're going to set it in here to burn so it'll be safe. Would you give me that answer? Remember, as soon as I touch it, it's disqualified. All right, Peter, you're going to keep me honest in a minute, but watch, Peter. You don't have to face away. I'm just kidding. So this is not lit now. Here we go. Peter, can you see anything there? No. Either can I, and it still doesn't. Wow, what did you, what did you put on this thing that it's not burning? There we go. Now it's burning. 
Now, this could be Lucia's place or it could be Tim's famous person. Either way, right now it's my face. So let me drop it in there. Ooh. And that is now burned up. All right. So you have your answer there. And what I'm going to do is uh, write down a prediction. I need a pencil and I need Peter. All right. So wait right there because what I'm going to do is I'm going to write. Okay. I already misspelled it. Let's try it again. Watch. I want you to watch me write it. Don't say it out loud. Can you read my scribble writing? Yes. You can. Excellent. Keep this answer and go sit down. You're going to keep me honest, Peter, because I'm going to read their answer right now, and then I want you to read out loud in a loud voice what I wrote. Does that make sense? Okay. The answer was Johnny Cash. What did I write down on that prediction? I did. I did. I wrote Johnny Cash. No, wait a minute. That means that was Tim's answer. And Lucia, you, you were thinking of a place, and that was the one that we burned up. Isn't that correct? And only you know it because it's already destroyed. And I want you to be honest in a loud voice. In fact, right into the microphone. Tell everybody what you chose for your place. Italy. She wrote Italy. Oh, it was so close. I said Italy. <laughs> Give them both a hand. They're great. Thank you so much. It was moon over Italy. That's what I remember. Or Italy at noon. It was one of those. Okay. All right. So if you have your four cards, let's wrap up with this. And then I'll, I'll close in prayer. Okay? All right. Are you guys okay? Are you having fun? I wasn't sure if you all left. Uh, I can't see anything. Okay. All right, so look at your cards. Uh, this, is, this, is a, this is a trick the ushers aren't crazy about. I make a real mess, but that's okay. I'm going to enlist the kids to help us clean up. So look at your cards. Make sure you have four different cards. You should have four different cards. They can be the same suits, but not the same letter or number. And the backs don't matter either. You can have blue cards, red cards, or a combination. But I want you to look at your four cards. Now that you've looked at them, turn them face down in your hand and shuffle them. Mix them up so they're not in the same order that we handed them out to you. I'm shuffling, shuffling, shuffling. Now they're all mixed up. You guys doing it? Paying attention back there? All right, I'm watching you. Here we go. Shuffle up those cards and then put them in a single stack in your hand and keep them face down. And reach over and tear them in half. All four of them. It's okay. I've trained these cards. Okay. So tear the cards in half. And then when you're done tearing them in half, just stack them up. So that you have one stack of cards in your hands. And you're keeping them face down in your hand. Good. Everybody done it? Great. You should have one little stack of cards. We're going to call it your deck of cards. Here's what I want you to do. Take the top one, two, three half cards off the top, and as a group, slide them anywhere you want into the middle of your deck of cards. Keep them together, but just slide them in to the middle of your deck. Excellent. And now, take the top card off, put it in a pocket, and if you don't have a pocket, slip it under your leg, seat, something, so it's safe. Good. Okay, now take the top card off and hide that one anywhere you want in the middle of your cards. Not on the top, not on the bottom, just slide it into the middle. Good. We're almost done. Take the top card off and turn and trade with somebody. Peter, you can come trade with me. I'm going to make you work really hard here, buddy. Okay, I got one and you got one. And when you get that card back, you can trade more than once, it's okay. When you get that card back from somebody, hide that one anywhere you want in the middle of your cards. All right, here we go. Now it's going to go much faster. Pay close attention. The top card goes on the bottom. The top card, we throw it in the air. Boop. Yeah, like we're celebrating Jesus' birth. Pretty cool. 
not graduation, Jesus' birth. It's Christmas. Okay. Take the top card. Now put it on the bottom. Take the top card and throw it at Tim. Yeah, just throw it at Tim. Let's throw. <laughs> Tim, you got to throw one at yourself. Good. Okay, good job. Good job. Okay, now take the top card and put it on the bottom. And take the top card and throw it at my heckler right over here. Throw it at him. That's good. Good job. I like it. <laughs> this is when I get back at the audience. That's great. All right. Take the top card, put it on the bottom. Take the top card now and throw it at Rachel. Right there in front. Rachel, yeah, Rachel. Look at all the cards. This is awesome. Kids, you're going to help me clean up in a minute. Not yet. Take the top card now. Pay attention. Top card goes on the bottom. Top card, we throw it at Randy. Throw it at Randy. Yes. Nice. He's like, what did I do? Good. Okay. Down to two cards. Down to two. Take the top card. Put it on the bottom. Take the top card. Throw it up in the air like we're celebrating Jesus' birth. Happy birthday, Jesus. And now you're down to one little card. It's only a half card. But I want you to reach into your pocket or under your seat and tell me if this illusion worked for you by a round of applause. Did it work? Yes? That is amazing. Now, let me tell you, I'll be honest with you. I'll be honest with you. That is a trick. It's not a miracle. God does miracles, okay? I just do goofy tricks. But if it worked for you, give me a round of applause there at least. Did it work? All right. I think one or two of you may not be honest about that it didn't work for you. But that's okay. It's important that you tried. All right? Hey, let's do this. Let's close it with a word of prayer. And uh, I, don't, I don't need the musicians to come up if they don't want to. So let's just close with a word of prayer. And um, let's pray. All right? I've really enjoyed my time with you tonight. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you so much for this privilege to come and just spend an evening with these really wonderful, fun people uh, in your house. Thank you, Lord, that you allow entertainment, you allow laughter, and most importantly, you allow broken people to come to you. And you offer grace and forgiveness and freedom from all sorts of things that weigh us down in this life. And you but extend a hand of love unconditionally. And all we do is just come to you and you forgive us of our sins. It's just remarkable to me that even me as a sinner could be forgiven for all that I have done and will ever do. Lord, you're offering that same hand of freedom to people tonight. And if you're here tonight and you would like to ask Jesus into your heart, it's not too late to do it. You can do it tonight. Just simply pray in your heart silently. Dear Jesus, please forgive me of my sins. Come into my life and make me a new person. And give me that joy that the world doesn't even know about but that Jesus' people knows all about. And forgive me of my sin and give me that joy and abundant life that you promise in your word. And if you'll do that tonight, he will accept you into his family and you will be part of his eternal family and he will never let go. So if you've done that tonight, I would urge you to, to uh, make your way forward and let us know after, uh, after this, this song, or even during the song if you wanted to. But thank you, Lord, for again for this privilege to be here tonight. What a joy it has been to celebrate your birth and your great sacrifice for us, but best of all, your defeating death and therefore promising life eternal to us. We thank you in Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen. Amen. Let's all go ahead and stand together. We're going to have the prayer team come forward. And if you want to receive prayer tonight, you receive the Lord tonight. If you would like to receive the Lord tonight, come forward. If you don't have a Bible, we'd love to give you one. 
We'd love to, for you to just come forward. And we're just going to go ahead and uh, close. You are God in heaven. Again, thank you so much for coming tonight. Make this your church home if you're just visiting. They would love to see you again, and I'd love to see you again. So uh, come back, okay? God bless you guys. Thank you so much for coming, and I'll be over at the cafe a little later, okay? <laughs>